This demo is on how to edit bitmap logo and signature image files for use on your receipts or mail merge letters in the program to get them to the right sizes that the program needs. There is a separate demo that covers how to specify the files to use in the program. The first thing you need to do is learn what dimensions in pixels, graphical dots, those files need to be to work well in the different areas of the program. You can see that in this help topic here that I have open using a logo or signature bitmap on your receipts. If you just scroll down a bit, there's a section for each of logos and signatures. For the logos, if you're only using them on the mail merge version of the receipts, they can actually be any size that you like the looks of on the receipt. Although the program will complain when you select one that is not sized to the standard size that it shows here, width 150 pixels by height 60 pixels. It's also allowed to be any multiple of those dimensions. For the regular or built-in non-mail merge version of the receipts, and also if you choose to print envelopes and choose to print your logo on them, which is an option, the logo will always be displayed at 150 by 60 pixels which will cause unpleasant distortion if the size isn't exactly that or a multiple of it. For instance, if it's 300 by 60 pixels, everything will look too squished in one direction or another. Now, for the mail merge version of the receipts, if you use a multiple, like 300 by 120, that's what's going to show up. So you have to look at that and see if that looks okay to you. Now, signatures, we've got the dimensions down here. They're supposed to be 166 by 39 pixels or any multiple of that. And you really do need them to be that size. They're always used at exactly that size everywhere in the program. So let's start with the signature. First of all, you have to have a bitmap file containing your signature and you have to know where on your computer it's located. Well, to get a bitmap file or a graphics file of your signature, if you don't have one, the natural way to do that is with a scanner. If you've got a multifunction printer or a separate scanner, or you've got somebody to do this for you that has a scanner, just do that. You write your signature on a piece of paper, preferably in black pen, because it tends to scan better than blue pen. And then you need to run the scanner. I can't tell you how to do that, as everyone is different. But let's assume you've succeeded in scanning the signature. You may want to tell it to scan only in black and white, if that's an option, and adjust the brightness and or contrast before saving it, if that's an option, to make it look good. I've also tried taking a picture of my signature with a digital camera, but the background always came out somewhat gray or colored, despite being done on a white page. So I gave up on that. Now you need to edit that scanned file to get it to the right size. Your scanner software may also have allowed you to crop it, i.e. move the corners in so most of the saved image is your signature before saving it, but I'm going to assume you didn't do that. You can use any graphics or photo editing software for this, like Photoshop, but I'm going to use just Windows Paint, which is a very simple image manipulation program that has always come with every version of Windows. I'm going to do the next step in the current version of Paint on this computer, which is a Windows 7 computer. So I just type paint, it comes up, and there we go. I'm going to assume that if you have a different photo editing software like Photoshop, you know how to use it and you'll do similar steps. So now we need to open the scanned signature file, which I do from here and open. I've actually opened it before, so I'll just pick it from this list, but obviously otherwise you would have had to know where to find it. Because it's a whole page that I scanned, I can't see the signature that was in the middle of the page. So I'm going to switch to the View tab and zoom out until I can see it. There we go. Now there are a few approaches I could take here. The first is to use the Select tool back on the Home tab to drag and select an area that includes the entire signature then click into that select and drag it up to the top left, just like that. Then we need to resize the surrounding area to just include the signature. That's called the drawing area in Paint. Other programs may call it something else. If I look at the bottom bar in Paint, I can see that the dimensions of the selection around the signature, which is here, are 945 by 321 pixels. 
the whole area is this 2550 by 4200. Now I can change the image dimensions to just include the selection area and whatever borders I've got at the top, if any, by changing it to say 1000 by 350, just to make sure I include everything. I do that by going to this paint drop down, the same one we used to open, and going to properties. In here, we can just type in what we want to change it to. What did we say? 1000 by 350? Yes, that'll do. Another way to do that sizing, after I undo it with the standard magic undo keystroke of Control Z in Windows document oriented programs like this one, is to scroll down. We don't have to at this point because we've zoomed enough. And just grab this corner, click on that, and drag to resize it to about just including the signature. Now let me show you an even faster way, although the earlier techniques may come in handy in other situations. I'm going to use Control Z a couple of times to get it back to the way it was when we opened the file. First we're going to use the Select tool to just drag a box around the signature area, totally including it. Then all I do is click this Crop button. That makes the entire image be just the selected area. Now we need to get this to be the right dimensions, 166 by 39 or a multiple of that. Again, we can see at the bottom that the dimensions now are 977 by 313. Let's bring up a calculator, just calc, and it comes up, and do some division. So 977 divided by 166 is a little under 6. So it's about six times too large. And 313 divided by 39 is a little over eight times too large. Let's calculate what eight times 39 would be. Eight times 39. And then if we use that dimension for the height, the width should be okay as well. So I'm going to go back here Properties, we're just going to change it to 312. And oh, I, ne I need this to be exact as well. So 8 times 166 is 1328. 1328. And there we go. We've got something that's an appropriate multiple of the dimensions. So let's save that with a new name. We can save it as a GIF picture. It doesn't really too much matter what format we use. And I'm going to call it dansignature.gif, which is a name I've used before to save this as I was practicing for this demo. That's OK about the color quality. It's OK that this is a multiple of the desired size. The program will scale it before it's displayed. However, it's probably a bigger file than we really need to use, so it wouldn't hurt to scale it back to the exact desired size, 1 8th. So we're going to use the Resize tool. Be sure that Maintain Aspect Ratio is checked so that you cannot accidentally change the ratio of the width to the height, which will make it look bad. There's a couple of ways we can do this, but if we switch to Pixels, we can just pick the official size, 166, and you see it automatically knows it's supposed to be 39 because it was already in the right dimensions, and just click OK. Now it looks very tiny, so let's get it back to 100% zoom level so at least we can see what it looks like. And we'll just save that once more. This time we can use this because we've already saved it with the desired file name. Let's move on to the logo. Hopefully your organization will already have a good graphical version of it and you won't have to scan it, which probably wouldn't come out great. I'm going to use a version of the Software for Nonprofits logo, so I'll just quickly open that. Uh, let's see, it's this one. This image is huge, 3000 pixels wide by 695 pixels high. So again, let's zoom out. Okay, we can see most of it now. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the blue border and the extra white space at the right by cropping it. So we'll select 
Just make sure we're high enough to get to the top of that big four and get all of it and crop. Let's now bring the width in to the desired 150 pixels without bothering with the calculator. We'll use the resize tool again. Again, maintain aspect ratio, change it to pixels, and 150. So it's now 150 by 34, which isn't exactly what we want, but that's okay. We'll work from there. View, zoom to 100%. As I mentioned earlier, if this is going to be used only in mail merge receipts, the size doesn't have to be exact as long as it will look okay. But let's assume we are using the standard non-mail merge receipts and or we want to also use this when printing envelopes. In that case, we need to fix it to be 150 by 60 with the properties menu that we used earlier. So 150 here, change it to 60 here, and okay. We've got extra white space at the bottom, but that's okay because this logo goes at the top right corner of our receipts. So let's save that with its own file name. Save as, again I'll say it's a GIF, and here's donation logo for receipts that I've saved it with before. And be sure to note which folder you're saving it in so that you can find it later. Let's look at one more case that comes up a lot, a logo that is a squarish shape. Let's open one up. It's an old logo that we used to use on the donation website. It's just kind of a hand putting an envelope into a collection basket. Let's uh, zoom in a bit so it looks better. Although, of course, it's kind of pixelated, but that's okay. The thing to keep in mind in this case is that since the logo goes at the top right of either type of receipt, or the mail merge letters. You want the logo to be at the right edge of the space. Now this is 32 by 32, so that's a bit small in height, since the logo is supposed to be 60 pixels high. Let's increase it to 150% to be closer to the standard logo height of 60. Resize, this time by percentage, 150, and OK. Of course that doesn't look too great because we had to scale it up. Most logos wouldn't be this small, so you wouldn't have that problem. Now change the actual dimensions to 150 by 60 with the properties. 150 by 60. And finally, and this is the important part for it to look good, we need to select an area including the logo. I'll just start way up here to make sure I get all of it. and drag that over to the right so that it's near the right and kind of centered vertically. We could change the zoom back to 100% just to see what it really looks like and then save it with a new name. I think we already used one called donation logo for receipts. Oh, that's okay. We'll use that again. This should give you some good tools for editing your logos and signatures. The next demo video shows you how to use them in the donation program. Thank you for listening.